Hello, this is my first process video for the UK Scrap Addicts on their creative team and the very first thing I want to apologise for the quality in the first minute or so of the video. I've been trying to have a different setup to video it and it was obviously a bit of a failure but I promise it does get better and this month's theme on the UK Scrap Addict team is monochrome and I've gone for a pure black, white and grey. So I'm using some patterned papers here to create the background and then I've got a black and white photograph and I mat it in white and in black so just to make sure that the photograph will have definition and stand out. I then decide that the background that I've picked, the pattern papers are quite busy so I'm going to use a fairly large piece of white cardstock so that my title and photograph will stand out. And I then add another layer of patterned paper to the photograph. And then on the white piece that I've cut down slightly smaller, I'm just doing some watercolour paints in two shades of grey. I mask it off so I've got a nice clean line just to give it some more added interest and I just because I didn't want it plain white and it's just a very pale grey as you can see there and then I just let that dry and once it's dry I use some black acrylic ink and I just put some smaller dots and then some large dots I find if you drop it from a height you get a really nice splashy effect on the outline of the big blobs so I do some really dark black for some definition. I've there I've got a wood veneer and I'm just going to paint that grey as well just using some acrylic paints. And my idea behind this layout was to use the blacks and whites and greys but just to create lots and lots of texture to give it interest instead. I think it's something that will really stand out in my album as being very different. And so I thought I would totally embrace the monochrome and that's why I went for black and white. So now you can see that everything's dry and then I'm just going to go ahead now and add lots of layers behind the photograph. I hope you can see that the quality, I'm not quite so bouncing around now on the picture. So I've got this sheet of vellum, it's got a very faint white pattern zigzag on. And then to create lots of texture I get a crepe paper streamer and with my tiny attacher I just staple it into like a ruffled effect that I just keep on going. You can also achieve the same sort of look on a sewing machine but as I haven't got mine out I thought I'd just use my stapler and I just do enough to fit along the bottom of the photograph and then I just use some double sided tape I'll just attach it underneath all of those layers So once I've got that, it is just a case of adding lots of layers. I'll attach the whole white sheet onto my pattern paper and I think that it does just break up that lovely leaf patterned paper which is from the Maggie Holmes Flourish collection. And I use a tea ruler just to line everything up just to make sure that everything's nice and straight and I decide that I want to make sure that those some of those big splatters are visible I didn't want to cover them all up now I've got some black and white die cut flowers that I had previously fussy cut out of some Maggie Holmes paper and I just attach four of those around the layering just to add another layer of interest And what I've done is basically pull out lots of black and white bits and bobs from my stash and put it on my desk ready. I'm using these Amy Tangerine stickers and these black foam sort of handwritten fonts. And I just think that that adds a real contrast and impact. 
And you can see now why I wanted to use the big white layer behind the photograph, because the title would have just got completely lost if it had been placed on the patterned paper. So I'm calling this layout Panda Shop. It's a photograph of my eldest son when we were on holiday last year. We went to a zoo in the Netherlands that has a panda and he's always been crazy about pandas since he was a little baby. So we took a photo of him in amongst all the cuddly toys. So now I'm just working on my layers behind the photograph. I cut up a doily and added a doily and I've added a black and white tag and I got a label and I stamp. I've got a really nice roller stamp there. It's self inking that I use a lot to date my photographs. And now I've gone on to using some baker's twine. There's some black and white and I just tie that in a bow and attach it with my tiny attacher in one corner and later I will use some more of that on the label. I found these black corner stickers and I think that they just like the pop of black add a bit of definition so I add four of those, two to the photograph and two to the white piece of paper. And now I've found some really nice white shiny fibre. They're very old. It must be 10, 12 years old when they were all the rage. But I thought that would be fun to use. And I just placed it down the bottom along the edge of the white paper. And again, using my tiny attacher just to staple it with hidden staples. And um, now I'm just getting scraps of paper. I do like black and white stripes and just adding a few more layers behind the photograph and I think you can the page is coming together really quite nicely I'm just looking through seeing what else I've found I have this George label that's the name of my son but it's actually from an Asda clothing brand called George but I saved it and I thought because it's black and white that would be a perfect layout to use so I tie some bakers trying in through the hole in black and white and grey and white and I decided to put it down at the bottom of the layout. I've now got these panda black and white puffy stickers and I placed three on the layout to make a triangle around the photograph and then I'm just going through my stash trying to find what else I've got. I find this lovely black and white polka dot ribbon that I know I really want to get a big piece on there so I'm just debating where it will go and in the end I go for the top right corner and I fold it over and again use my stapler just to attach that for an extra layers I tuck it behind some of the die cuts and now I'm finishing off my layout by adding some really pretty grey sequins there from Studio Calico and they're just really different because they are shiny without being too shiny because they're grey. And so I just scatter those around in several clusters and use some wet adhesive to glue those all down. Just filling in some blank white spaces to add a bit more interest. And finally I remember my wood veneer. So I glue that at the top of the photograph above some of the layers and that really stands out. And then I think the last thing I do is I use the Tim Holtz tiny alphabet stickers, which I am using all the time at the moment. And I just create a subtitle of the name of the zoo that we were at. Just again, because I thought that that was a little bit too white, that space there. And it's a nice detail to have journaled on the layout. So this is my first creation. I hope you enjoyed watching and you found it really useful and I'm going to leave you with some close-ups of the page now and I'll be back again in a month's time with another process video for UK Scrap Addicts. Thank you for watching. Bye!